everyone and welcome to my Zone online school. I, my name is Teacher Mutsa <laughs> and I have my friend here joining us for today's lesson. Let's say hi to everyone at home. Hello everyone. Our theme this week has been autumn and we have been talking a lot about autumn. But before we get into today's lesson, we need to sanitize our hands. So please take your sanitizer. Well done. Remember, sanitizing is very important. That is why everywhere you go now, everyone is sanitizing. And make sure that your hands are dry once you're done sanitizing. Also, it's good to check your social distancing. So you put your arms out in front of you and also by your sides as well. Very good. Today's lesson is about synonyms, antonyms, and poetry. Our first exercise for today can be found on page 26. On page 26, we will be discussing synonyms and antonyms. I know these are very weird sounding words. So let's say them together. Let's say the word synonym. Very good. Let's start with the synonyms. Now a synonym is a word that means the same or almost the same as another word. You can see that in the yellow column, all the words that are there mean the same as another word or almost the same. Start can mean begin, pretty can mean lovely, quick can mean fast, large can mean enormous, scared can mean frightened, and so on and so forth. If you look at me, I am a woman, but I can also be called a lady. So a synonym is a word that means the same or sounds like has the same meaning of another word. Let's now go to antonyms. Let's say the word antonyms together. Very good. Now antonyms are words that have the opposite meaning of another word. These words we already know, but we didn't know that they were antonyms. For example, loud can mean soft. Fast can mean slow. And so on and so forth. You can look at the board for an example. Here we have two men, but there is an older man and a younger man to show that they are the opposite of each other. So an antonym is a word that means the opposite of another word. Let's now turn to page 27 for our exercise. On page 27 you can see we are going to change those words into synonyms, the ones that were underlined. Let's look at number one. Number one says, Tommy liked watching the huge elephant at the zoo. The word that is underlined there is huge. If you look at the synonyms that you can find, another word for huge can be big or large. So you can write the word big. Let's take a look at number five. Number five says, Sarah's bedroom is very tidy. The word tidy is the one that is underlined there. And you have to think of another word that means tidy. Another word that can mean tidy is neat. So you can write the word neat. The rest of the synonyms you are going to do by yourselves. Let's take a look at antonyms. 
Remember, an antonym is a word that is the opposite of another word. If you look below, you have a table and it is also asking you to change the underlined word. Let's look at number one. Number one says, my teacher gives hard homework. <laughs> I hope your teacher does not give you hard work, homework. Let's take a look at our table. We have so many words there, but I think the answer is easy. So the opposite of hard is easy. So you can please write the word easy in the space provided. I would like you to also cross out that word easy so that you don't use it again. Let's look at number six. Number six says, I like a cold lunch. Oh, I'm sure nobody really likes a cold lunch. So let's look for the proper word there. If you look at the box, we have the opposite of cold, which is hot. So we can put the word hot on the space provided. And the sentence will read, I like a hot lunch. Now that sounds a lot better. The rest of these sentences you can do by yourselves. But remember, a synonym means same meaning to its word. And an antonym means opposite from the word that is given. Good luck. I hope you now know the difference between synonyms and antonyms. Remember, synonyms mean the same and antonyms mean the opposite. Now let's take a look at our exercise on page 28. On page 28, we have another beautiful poem, but this one is mainly for the grade threes. Let's read it together. Remember, when you are reading something, make sure that you read it three times. I am going to read it with you twice and you will read it by yourself for a third time. The poem is called Autumn Leaves. Autumn leaves, they flutter as they fall down to the ground. They whisk and twist, they dance, but they don't make a sound. Quiet, oh so quiet, they whisper on their way, landing in a pile in which we all can play. And that is our poem today. Let us try again. This time, if you'd like, please read with me. Autumn leaves, they flutter as they fall down to the ground. They whisk and twist, they dance, but they don't make a sound. Quiet, oh so quiet, they whisper on their way, landing in a pile in which we all can play. Wonderful. Now I'd like you to please turn to page 29. On page 29, there is an instruction there for you that says write your own poem about autumn and draw the pictures of autumn in the space provided. So you know what autumn looks like. We have been talking about it the whole week. We are excited about the leaves, the wind, and what you can do during autumn, as well as what you can wear during autumn as well. So I'd like you to please use your imagination as well as the things that you know about autumn. The other instruction that is below is to start each line of your poem with the letter on that line. So, for example, we have the letter A at the beginning of that line, which means that your word must start with A. Remember, your poem needs to rhyme and make sense. So please take your time, think about the words you want to put on your poem before you write it. And if you need some inspiration, I want you to please think about what you like about autumn. 
Is it the leaves? Is it the colors? Is it the weather? Is it the warm coffee you can drink? Or is it the playing in the leaves? I really want you to enjoy yourselves and be creative. Hope you have fun. Good luck. Now we have a special treat for you here. I'd like us to please sing about autumn. We have talked so much about autumn that we now need to sing about it. Let us now turn to page 30. On page 30, you can see that there is a lovely song there for us, talking about the leaves falling and where they are falling. The first one says that it fell on my nose. The second one fell on my toes. The last one fell on my head. And then it tells us the different colors of the leaves. We have yellow, orange, and red. So we are going to sing this song together. You, me, my friend, and Zashi. Are we ready, everybody? Are you ready, Zashi? Okay. Let's go. One, two, three, go. Leaves are falling, leaves are falling. One fell on my nose. Leaves are falling, leaves are falling. One fell on my toes. Leaves are falling, leaves are falling. One fell on my head. Leaves are falling. enjoyed that. Sashi, did you enjoy that? Wonderful. Did you enjoy that? Very good. So, as always, when we are done with our lessons, we need to sanitize our hands. So, let us take our sanitizer. Very good. Rub inside and round and round and make sure that they are dry. Also practices social distancing. <laughs> so, from my friend Zashi and I, we would like to say goodbye. Hi everyone, I'm back. And if you are scared of what you read on social media, Talk to your parents and ask them the questions. They know everything. Until next time. Bye.